I have been using Arch Linux for the past week, and this video is everything that I had to go through to make it usable, or at least get it to work. So, tired up of Windows, which used to be my primary OS, I decided to switch to something new because of the many faults with Windows, and I installed Arch Linux, as you might know if you have seen the previous video. I have been using Windows for my entire life, ever since I touched a computer, so making a shift to a completely different ecosystem was not easy, at least not for me. But, the best way to get something done is to begin. So, before getting started, let's try to understand my daily workflow on my PC. In my day-to-day -day use, I use my PC primarily for programming and learning stuff around it. And I recently have got this passion of creating content around it, and for the most part, that's it. This workflow involves writing code in a code editor, browsing the internet, copying and pasting solutions, solving and writing down problems and ideas, screen recordings and screenshots, editing videos, making thumbnails and whatnot. Windows although has a decent experience with these tasks, but it sucks at optimizations and shadows my PC's power. So, could Linux solve it for me? Right after the install, all I had was a desktop environment which I had no familiarity with. So, first things first, I had to get my daily use software installed on it. The first thing we had to install was OBS Studio to record this whole thing. Although it installed with ease, but it wasn't recognizing my screen. So after a few hours of debugging and a Stack Overflow solution, we were good. Now to use H.264 for encoding my video, I had to install the NVIDIA drivers, and with a quick install and reboot, the drivers were installed and ready to use. Weird issue I ran into with these drivers was that these randomly disappear and stop working. Everything that uses these drivers refuses to work, and I eventually need to reboot my PC. Anyways, the quality of the recording, however, is pretty average than Windows. Doesn't matter how much I play with the bitrate and other settings, the quality doesn't seem to change much. I tried to look up for a solution, but most people say that NVIDIA drivers don't work pretty well with Linux. So if you guys know the best settings for OBS on Linux, make sure to comment those down. Now for a browser, I mainly use Brave for the ad-free experience and Chrome on the side sometimes. However, I have seen all the Linux fanboys use Firefox, so I decided to give it a try. Firefox works great. It feels like using something new compared to the other browsers. But was it worth leaving Brave? Hell no. Brave is an emotion. Now to install Brave, I had to install Yay. Yay is a package manager which extends the functionalities of Pac-Man to access AUR or the Arch user repositories. AUR is a repository of software packages built by the Arch community. Pac-Man can only install software packages from the official Arch Linux repositories, but AUR contains packages submitted by regular users. With Yay installed, I could now install Brave. Now, I had installed other stuff like Dolphin for the file manager, VLC for media playing, Vim for editing files, and other basic but important stuff during the Arch installation. For coding, I primarily use VS Code, and installing it was pretty straightforward. I also use Obsidian for writing down my stuff while learning, planning, and creating content, so I installed that too without requiring much efforts. By now, I have most of the daily use software, and I almost thought I was ready to make a switch onto Linux. But things decided to go the opposite way from what I wanted them to. Coding was great. I coded Hello World in three different languages, because why settle with one when you can write bad code in three? I also made a commit from VS Code to GitHub just to kickstart things, and it was all good. Coding wasn't my main concern. Coding is great on Windows, too. My main concern was content creation. I have been reading and watching videos about switching to Linux for quite a while now, and Linux for creators has not proved to be a good idea for most of the people that I saw. Well, from my experience, I used DaVinci Resolve for editing my videos and Figma to design my thumbnails. Both of these had major issues. Firstly, Figma is owned by Adobe, which does not support Linux, putting me at a disadvantage. While Figma can be accessed through a browser, it lacks the performance of a dedicated application. The experience is okay. It lags sometimes, but it is usable. Now, for DaVinci Resolve, this is where where things went wrong. I installed it using Yay, and the video that you are watching right now was supposed to be edited on Linux, but turns out that wasn't the case. When I tried to open it, moment of truth, it didn't open. It just loaded in the taskbar and nothing happened. I rebooted my PC, but nothing happened. I even tried to reinstall the editor, but still nothing. I was highly disappointed and Linux lost its reliability for me. This exact same thing happened with Spotify. I tried to open it and it just didn't. At this point, I lost interest. I went back to Windows and just binged YouTube for another day. During this break, I came to remember about VirtualBox. 
It basically allows you to run virtual machines on it, and you can install different operating systems on these. It seemed that VirtualBox was what I was looking for, so I quickly deleted my partition, which contained Arch because I have limited storage. I downloaded the Arch image, and after configuring Arch inside the VirtualBox, I messed up the install, so I had to do it again from the start. The second time, I messed up the partitions, so I had to do it again. Looks like it's all because of your lovely comments. The third time, I finally got in. This time, I tried Hyperland, but it didn't work and the virtual box just froze. Switching to a lighter desktop environment, I installed Sway. Sway worked okay, but as soon as I installed Firefox on it, the virtual box froze again. My hopes were shattered again. This time, I was ready to give up for real. Until, I met Leo. Leo suddenly popped up like a guardian in my Discord. He is a Linux user, and has been using it around for quite a while now. After a small chat, Leo encouraged me to install Arch again and give it another try. When I told him that Resolve doesn't seem to work on Linux, he shared a clip of him editing a video and turns out it was I who messed up the install. This time I went all in. Although I corrupted my partitions again and had to install Arch for the fifth time, I managed to get in again. I installed Hyperland again. Switching to Hyperland was also Leo's recommendation and it was quite worth it. The experience with Hyperland was quite amazing and smooth. I really liked the tiling windows and the overall experience is too good. After some basic settings, I installed Resolve again and fingers crossed, it worked. My happiness crossed the skies when I was greeted inside Resolve, but this happiness disappeared as soon as I tried to import a clip inside the timeline. Turns out the free version of Resolve for Linux doesn't support importing MP4. It's only supported in the paid version. This is a major setback as generally most of the videos are in MP4. After looking here and there for free solutions, I managed to corrupt my DaVinci Resolve. I reinstalled it with Ye, but it didn't change anything. And after another day of Leo and me trying to fix it, nothing seemed to work. Finally, after a deep dive into the error, we came to a conclusion that if something had to be wrong, it had to be with Ye. So we tried to install it with another package manager, and it worked. Turns out I pressed the wrong buttons at the wrong time, causing the package to lose some dependencies before. By the way, check out my Discord because we keep having fun little nerdy chats there. Now for editing this particular video, I gotta know that Hyperland doesn't support dragging and dropping of files among two apps. It does in few, but not every app. So, for my unfunny memes, I had to install KDE again. After the install, I was editing the intro of the video that you are watching right now, but it was trash. It froze and lagged. When I kept on editing, the lag was further increasing. So I went ahead to get a solution for this and played around with some packages, which ended up corrupting Resolve again. At this moment, it was about 2 in the morning and I was frustrated. The next morning, I was hoping that there should be a way to export this project from Resolve. And guess what? Resolve actually has an export project function. So I just imported it into Windows and here we are. Now, for the configurations, the part which I put the least focus on, I just added the waybar on top of my Hyperland just to track time and other stuff. For screenshots, I installed Grimm and created a custom shortcut for it. I tried Shutter on KDE before, but Grimm was better. I also made some bash scripts like one for starting Hyperland because I wasn't using a login manager and another for reloading the waybar every time I made a change to it. Finally, I created some custom shortcuts to have a more Windows kind of feeling and feel some familiarity. And with that, I called the configurations off for now. Final thoughts. Linux is overpowered for tasks like programming and custom configurations, but at the same time, editing or content creation in general sucks. Windows, however, is way ahead of Linux in these experiences. I can bear the bad optimization if it still gets my work done. What I really liked about Linux was the feel of it. It felt like I was connected to it. Furthermore, I will try to use Linux for programming and maybe switch to Windows to create content. It would be a hustle, but only time will say. So till the next one, thank you for watching the video and See you again.